This is episode one of the Acura cast. Uh, we did touch as a bunch of standalone episodes, mostly. Um, some of our touch discussion was stapled to the back end of uh, of longer, like existing episodes, but mostly we did them standalone. So we figured, I figured, uh, we would do the same for Akira, mm -hmm. uh, which is our new classic series. We're talking about the manga, pages one to one sixty four. Yep. Uh, which on manga decks is the first two chapters. If you're reading the epic version, it's the first like two and a half chapters or two and two thirds. Yep, it's two and um, a half. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there's there's the Dark Horse version, there's the epic version. Uh, both of those are read left to right like an American comic. And also for Akira's 35th anniversary, there was a version that was released, uh, read the way manga typically is read, which is right to left. Um, then there's different versions having color or being in black and white and like chapter designations. There's differences between all the ways that Akira has been published. <laughs> It's a whole big mess, but we're working through it as best we can on our end. Yep. If you have page numbers, we're going up to 164 within Volume 1. That's probably the surest way to make sure that you're on track with us mm -hmm. here for Episode 1 of the Akira Cast. Woo! Exciting. <laughs> I I mean, that Akira has been like a staple for, uh, for anime, for manga, for the uh, cyberpunk genre for a long, long time now. It's you know, like everyone talking about how influential Akira is. Uh, we both have watched the Akira anime. And um, for me, myself, I hardly remember it. I watched it twice. And, uh, you seen it twice? Okay. I seen it twice. And uh, I still, you know, like a lot, a lot of things in, uh, in, uh, in this Akira world, new world, that, you know, I still, I, I still want more. You know, like more to uh to to be immersed of, so uh I think this is a good chance to read the Akira manga, which is you know like uh the story in uh, more details. We get to see the world more, and um you know like how influential uh, uh the manga is to uh to the whole industry. Yep, and people will be. I mean, people have been talking about it for a long time. You're right about that. They they still are today, and they will be for a long time in the future. Mm -hmm. Most likely because uh, there's been an announcement that there's going to be an Akira uh, anime. Yep. A new one that's going to adapt the entire work. I, I, um, sorry, but I doubt it's going to be good, but you know. <laughs> well, at well least it was announced a long manga. time ago, and there haven't been any announcements since. So, you know, of course, that could mean that the project has stalled. Um, but I think the more likely case is that it's just going to take a long, long, long time to produce. Yep, yep. Um, and of course, there is no way, no matter how long they spend on it, there is no way it will live up to, you know, like the visual pedigree of the film. Yep. You... Um, because we're just beyond the point where Japan can produce that sort of animation. Yep. And um, I I mean, it, it needs to have like a, a really good director in order to, you know, like a strong reason character, uh, directors in order to... Well, Otomo is still alive. Well, I have to imagine he's working on it. Hopefully, he's working on it, not someone else, because uh, the way I see it, uh, many uh retro work like uh the new Cowboy Bebop live action. Uh, oh well, that's a completely different thing. That's Death Note. You know, it it just you know like so mix in. Uh... That's live action. That's completely different. Well, all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any expectations that it's going to be amazing or anything, but it is. I mean, just to speak to the it popular during a story, it is. Yeah, how popular, how uh, long lasting. It's gonna, you know, new Akira. Yep. I'm sure will turn a lot of heads yep. of people who have never experienced it or even heard of it before. Yeah. Um, and it'll live even longer. Yep. As a result of that new series, if it ever sees the light of day. Yep. I don't know, like five, ten years from now, whatever. Yep. For now, though, we're going to talk about the manga, and um, I mean, where do we start? I guess with the intro, which tells us that in 1992, nukes were dropped on major cities all over the world. Yeah. Or not nukes, but a new type of bomb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I it kicked off World War Three, and here we are, 32, well, 38 years later, well, well, well. in the year 2030. Yeah. Was it all over the world? Or was it just in Tokyo? No, I mean, there's the. It's not just Tokyo. 
Right. Okay. Um, you know, because there's that little text box. I mean, this is the thing. We're, we're reading different versions of it, but I assume that yours had that little text box that said um, there were a whole bunch of major cities. Yep. I, I think they started to uh, start the World War Three. That's why I assume that you know that all these cities, when uh, when they name it. I see. No, I don't think that's just indicating that those cities and countries are participating in World War Three. I think they were all uh, bombed. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Yep. And uh, but I mean the story is going to be taking place in Tokyo. Yep. I guess Neo Tokyo. I. And it's going to be focusing on kids. I was surprised by how, I mean, it's eighth year. The school they atten- attend is an eighth year vocational school. Now, at, at a certain point, you do learn Tetsuo's age, and I think he's 15. Mm-hmm. Um, so eighth year in school, you're 13, turning 14. So these kids have been held back. Yep. Um, but still, I would I would have assumed they were like 17, 18-ish. But they're not. They're younger than that. Yeah, they just kind of surprising to me. Yeah, they're just fifteen, and I I think it's interesting in in the fact that uh the new Tokyo, uh, from what we heard from um, uh, uh from the from the cast is about to host the uh, Olympic Games, mm-hmm. and in reality, it's Tokyo who hosts the Ol- Olympic Games re- re- uh, just recently, two thousand and twenty. Right. It's too bad they didn't sync it up so that it would happen in 2031. Yep, yep, yep. Just got to delay everything. I mean, COVID uh, could, you know, with with all the disruption that COVID provided, there could have been a future where it was Tokyo 2031. And uh, we get to start with uh, Biker Gang, uh, start with uh, Kaneda and uh, Tetsuo. It's Kaneda, Tetsuo, and to be honest, I don't remember any of the other guys' names, if yep. we even learned them. No, no, we don't. I know their hairstyles, though. Oh, right. Even though um, <laughs> most of Otomo's characters have the same uh, very condensed facial features and the same round heads. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes their faces are a little bit taller than other characters, but that's really the only variation. The hair, though, is a pretty good identifier because all of them have, like, a l- their hair is, like, spiking off to one side or it's, like, wavy over here on the right. Or mm. You can usually tell which character's talking if you look at the hair. Yep. Even among characters of this, of similar age, like um, Canada's, Canada's uh, gang are, because they all attend the same school. Yep. So they go to um, the detonation site where the bomb went off. Um, yep. Yep. And I don't know why they go there exactly, just because they're, you know, they're ripping up the road. Yep. Just trying to trying to go wherever they're not supposed to, because they're punks. Yep. I actually uh, like the fact that we introduced to uh, the main character of the story as uh, Canada, like the guy who, you know, like really unlikable. But um, he, um, like like we see through this volume, he forced his way to, to become like an, uh, a, a, a pack of the, of the big stories. Yeah, uh, he kind of inserts himself into Ryu and Kei's organization and just their general plot and their business yep um there's the first there's the scene at there's there's the name of a a particular bar i think i wrote it down harukiya harukiya uh where that's like a popular hangout spot i guess and that's where ryu and k indicate to each other when they're at the city that they're going to meet yep. so when he sees k he's like whoa blah, 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 and he like hot girl alert so that's his that's his reason initially for like tagging along with them the first time yep and then the second time he just happens to be in the area when they blow up that uh that facility yep near old tokyo yep that's right uh, which is a pretty pretty great coincidence for him because he gets the ck again yep uh, <laughs> you know, recently I was watching Freedom, which is an OVA uh, by based on a manga of Otomo's. I yep. think it's based on one of his manga. I don't think it's anime original. Freedom, uh, and it's All about right. like you know returning to Earth after being on the moon for a long time and realizing that there's still civilization down there. How long? And it's exactly the same. Like the really? main character's motivation is the same. He he <laughs> goes to Earth for a girl. Who he's like head over heels in love with like an idiot. So I guess that's just that's Otomo's go to is 
<laughs> put a cute girl somewhere in there and then have the main guy be like, whoa, <laughs> I'm just going to insert myself into situations where I don't belong in order to uh, to win her hat. Have a, yeah, to have a chance with her. Yeah, to, to have her attention. And then and, and having attention, he, he did. Because, uh, yeah, um, that's true. Uh, while, while running a mile, he uh, uh, get himself in, injured after Takashi. Right. So you're referring to 26 as Takashi? Yep. 26 yep. Takashi, yep. Um, yeah, he has to swerve to avoid the little child with the face of a grandpa. Yep. Yep. And that's when Akira really kicks itself off. Yep. Because then there are psychic powers. There's a guy who becomes invisible. That's yep. Takashi. I. All right. Uh, so first, uh, before we're talking about any other characters, I I like to bring up the uh, uh, the settings because I I actually think the setting is very uh, intriguing. You know, like it's it happened in the uh, in the future. It happened in after the World War Three, and everything is in ruin, and. Um, we see like all these kids now uh you know like more like they are uh rebels against uh the the current government yeah and not not just uh i don't know about government just they're anti authority yep, in general right. yep they hate their school which they view as a prison yep um they hate the cops who they view as you know just wanting to stop them from having fun I'm um, I like I like the introduction of uh, their district. Um, I, I I don't know if you have that um, uh, the the panel where they said like welcome to uh, I think district six, and um we we have like a um, a uh, a someone someone wrote it down in it uh, now that um you know like welcome to uh, to the to the prison. Well, that was that was their school. Yeah, that, welcome that's... to. 8th District uh, Vocational School. And someone yep. wrote 8th District Youth Prison Entry Free. Yep, yep, yep. I, I love that. I, I love the amount of details they put in there. Yeah, there's a lot of graffiti. That's the probably the most uh, notable one, most notable instance. But there is there is more graffiti yep. um, on various, like, stairwells and stuff. Yep. Like the stairwell that leads down into... Um, what's it called? I just I already forgot. Oh, Harukiya. Yep. Yeah, the bar. There's graffiti there as well. Mm-hmm. And of course, like English, using English phrases is kind of like a very cool thing in Japan. It can be seen that way at least. So <laughs> the F word is yep. uh, graffitied on some walls. <laughs> yep. It's it's so it's so exotic. <laughs> yeah, but there's a there's a general from the. From the crumbling architecture and the the characters who do seem to be kind of restless and uh, resistant to authority, you do get the sense that things are probably not very uh, like the economy is not exactly booming. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. there are probably a lot of people without work. Um, a lot of infrastructure is not being built or repaired at the at the rate necessary for like healthy economic expansion. Yep. Um, and I mean, you can probably trace all of that back to the the bombs that went off thirty eight years ago. Yep, yep, yep. Like the the world hasn't recovered since then. Mm-hmm. And the re- part of the reason for that, in you know, in addition to the the war breaking out, is probably whatever is going on with the government, the military, uh, and this program that they're running, where they've got like psychic grandpa children. Yep. Um, working working for them as like human weapons. Yep. Which so, we've only just started to learn about. And yeah. we're only the only reason we're involved in it at all is by mere chance. Yeah, that's right. So um the whole the whole bulk of um uh, the volume, the uh the material that we read so far is involving the escape of Takashi. Uh and um K we 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 got to see K and Ryu like uh, the uh, the resistant organization that uh that's uh support the escape of Takashi and trying to hide him, and uh the whole pursuit of the uh of the police the uh the 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 army, uh, and um you know like secret government uh directed by Colonel um Shik- Shikishima. 
Shikishima. Okay. Shikishima. Yeah. I missed his name completely. And uh, yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, somehow, uh, some somehow, uh, Canada and uh, Tetsuo is involved. I involved in 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 on that as well, especially Canada. Well, especially Canada so far, but I think Tetsuo. You know, his psychic power is awakened at the very end of yep. these 164 pages. Yep, yep, yep. Like, specifically the last couple pages, he's, we've we've seen uh, that he's had tests run on him. Like, he was, you know, the classic sci-fi trope where a doctor is running a test on someone and it's at level, you know, number. Yep. Yep, and then they yep. say, boost it up to the next number. <laughs> uh, and it's like, whoa, red alert, this character is going to go through some some real uh suffering yep 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 so he he's undergoing testing because they when his brain was scanned um after the accident they brought him into their facility they scanned his brain and apparently he has the potential for like rapid um psychic evolution or development Mm -hmm. um so now there are tests being run on him and we see at the very end of these these pages that um, he's in his bed in pain mm-hmm. and like a vase or a pot or something uh, shatters in his room. Yep, yep, yep. That was holding like flowers and then the water trickles down and it's and it's, it's dripping on top of him. That's right. And it, it looked like he's, he's, he's melting as well or he's just wetting a lot. They, he's just wet. Yeah. yeah right. Um, although I'm sure, you know, in, in terms of the way that those those panels were arranged the way they were drawn and framed and everything that that was that was intentional yep um it kind of looked like he was melting like he was uh decomposing you know it's it's foreshadowing for what's going to happen to all these other children and what may eventually happen to tetsuo you know it's not as though he's going to get psychic powers um you know for free Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at no cost to his you know his own body or psyche Something's gonna go down. He's gonna have to pay some sort of price. Um, yep. So yeah, I'm I'm sure that it that that framing was was purposeful on Otomo's part. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the other when we see that nursery uh, where the other children are kept, that's like a big trope as well. And I wonder what the like what the first book or film or whatever was to do that, like to to create a, a nursery setting where a whole bunch of children that have been experimented on are kept. And this, like the, the way that the walls are painted and everything looks very friendly and like warm and comforting. Yep. But really the only reason they're being held there is because some organization wants to exploit them. That's so I, yeah. That's, I mean, I've probably seen that in like 10 different anime. Uh, uh, uh even like in, in other uh, American TV shows uh, or films, uh, you know, like Mike fight, way back to the uh, to the classic uh, classic times yeah i would have to imagine that akira wasn't the first to do it yep um it's possible but there it's probably been done before it's effective in any case and i mean it's doubly effective here because the children uh i mean they don't look like children at all yeah they look kind of monstrous yeah especially kyoko the girl yep. Who has the dream about Akira like awakening, which really freaks out the the colonel. Yep. Um, So yeah, throughout clue as to like the importance of the name of the manga. That's right, because throughout the uh, uh, the the pursuit, we hear a lot of Akira of the name Akira. We don't know who that who that is yet. We I I think we can assume that it is like one of the uh, psychic. uh, uh, people as well yeah but they're currently dormant or something they're not yep. awake yeah they not and awake. when they wake up it's going to be like curtains for everybody some yep you can you can even probably uh make the connection between the bombs that went off 38 years ago mm. and these psychic kids that's right yep. like if the colonel is that worried about the the idea that akira might wake up mm. then he's probably thinking on a very you know, like large scale, something yep. catastrophic will happen. Yep. And um, he he also been afraid that uh, you know, like he doesn't have enough time to prepare 
when uh, when Akira wakes up. So Akira yeah. had to be a pretty big deal. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. So how how do you feel about the the characters in general? Like Kaneda, we spend uh, a lot of time with him. I actually like his um he he certainly an unlikable characters. We we want to hate this guy. He uh but um um he he served he served a good a really good um a uh, role in uh in these stories, like uh he he provide you know like he like I said he uh he jump into the uh he for his his way into the uh the main story light, he he now in possess of the uh of the uh pills which is kind of you know like uh important. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and um, he has uh one of his girls uh pregnant, the one who you know like uh who who give the drugs the school to him. nurse the school nurse, and uh, the way that I he, I, he I think that may be an adult woman. Oh wow! Right. Yeah, because I mean, what kind of school is going to employ a nurse who's like you know fifteen? That doesn't make any sense. That so even though true. she's she's not exactly drawn like yep. an adult, yeah, uh, but I guess she is. And, uh, so he's he's knocked up an adult woman. Yep. And when she says I'm pregnant, he was like, "Oh, cool. Can I watch yeah. you have the kid?" Yeah. <laughs> that that just his response. So you know, like he. <laughs> well, and um, and later on when she was kicked out by her, she uh, he doesn't know why. He's just like, "What's wrong with her today?" Yeah. Well, he calls her a slut. Yep. At least in yes. my translation, he does. Ah, uh, jeez. Um, so he's. He's just, as far as life goes, he's in it for, like, a good time. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not really too concerned about anyone else's experience. And, uh, uh, he's he's in it for himself. And uh, he's uh, the leader of the biker gang, which I, I think he, he really take a, uh, he, he, he really proud of that. So, um, that, I, I think from the, from the very first few uh, panel, we can see the relation. Uh, the chemistry between uh, him and Tetsuo, that uh, you know, like Tetsuo kind of have like a uh, a uh, inferior uh, complex around uh, around Canada, but like afterwards, after the uh, uh, the the accident, uh, he 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 more of like stand up on on his own against uh, Canada. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that because. I I couldn't really detect what the dynamic between Kaneda and Tetsuo was, j- not just from that initial trip that they took to the edge of the, the like the blast zone. Yep. Um, there's a little bit. There's a little exchange between the two of them. Um, yep. I think this is probably after, like, they get to a roadblock and then they yep. kind of set up a little ramp. Yep. That you yep, can yep. Ramp over to get to the other side, and yep. Kaneda is the first one to do it, and Tetsuo follows him. Yep. So automatically you have Kaneda as the leader, Tetsuo as the follower. But then right right after that, once they get going again, and I don't understand how they're able to talk over the sounds of the <laughs> yep. uh, motorcycles exactly. Uh, speech but, bubble. Yeah, they, they talk with literal speech bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> what we're seeing is not the abstracted manga version of text that's actually happening in real life. Yep. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting concept Yep. for a, like a manga or a comic to play with. But there's there's a little exchange between the two of them. Like T- Tetsuo tells Kaneda, "You take too many chances." This is after they've gone over that little ramp that they've made. Mm-hmm. You, Kaneda, you take too many chances. So Kaneda retorts by saying that Tetsuo wants to live forever. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's the problem with Tetsuo. He plays it too safe. Kaneda's yep. too risky and aggressive. Tetsuo yep. is too passive. He's too safe. Um, Before and he wants to live forever. That's yep. specifically what Kaneda says. So you have to imagine that's it's like given that he gets psychic powers, yep. You have to imagine that's foreshadowing. Yep, yep, yep. That's the right. idea that Tetsuo is cautious and the root of that is that he wants to live forever. Dude, what are you eating? <laughs> Sounds like you've been eating it for like the last twenty minutes. Sorry. Meat hungry. Sounds like a bag of popcorn or something. It is the um, rice crackers. Oh, nice. Um, yep. So there's that little exchange between the two of them gave me just a general idea of their relationship. But 
Beef. The fact that Tetsuo, after he like gets out of the hospital, yep. is ha- has completely transformed. At least he's seemingly transformed. Hmm. Kind of took me by surprise. Like, yep. I don't know. It, it's not a. We didn't know a lot about him or about Kaneda prior to that point. So the fact that he is now butting heads with the leader of the the gang. I mean, obviously, it's supposed to. He's supposed to be acting very differently than he normally does. But we also don't have a great idea of how he acted before. Yeah. Well, so we can't get a great sense of the contrast. Obviously, that's it's yeah. there. There is a contrast, you know, happening, but it's not as though we had chapters and chapters to get to know the guy. That's right. But uh, before the scene that you mentioned, where the two talking about, um, you know, like you, uh, you take too many chances and uh, you 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 want to live forever. Uh, there was an extreme before that uh, when uh, uh, Canada want to tell something and uh, he uh, he want Tetsuo to. Um, to reaffirm that, so Tetsuo had to had to tell a lie. Oh, what is what was that? Uh, that that was when they when they read the uh the the block road, and um, I remember Canada had to say uh say something to uh, to the other member of the gang, which 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 is a lie, and then um tell tell Tetsuo to elaborate that. So uh uh Tetsuo just like hey me, oh yeah he he did that. I I remember that that lies. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember this at so, all. I'm actually so, booting up my. Yeah. So it 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 just mean that uh Canada you know like it's more um uh, uh when it come to uh Canada Tessio uh, relationship Canada is always the one who take the lead and Tessio the one to follow and be manipulated by Canada. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at my copy of the manga right now. Do you see that? I remember that no. scene. Huh, all right. Wait for me. Because I, I remember there's a, like a little HMB before... Uh, before... No, okay, no, this is after. This is after what I was talking about. I see it now. Right, right, all right. This is after. That's what I heard. Tell him, Tetsuo. Yep. But I, I don't even think that's Kaneda... No, that's not Kaneda saying that. It's not. No, that's somebody else. Because Kaneda in this scene doesn't have his helmet on, and the guy who's tell who's saying tell him Tetsuo has his helmet on. Jeez, all right, I was wrong then. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't. We just don't have much time. We just don't have yep. much time to get to know them. Yep. Um, yep, that's right. So I I understand that Tetsuo is acting differently, but. You know, we weren't that well acquainted with him before. So it's possible that there was always a, yep. a seed of, like, disagreement between the two of them. And now it's just coming yep. to a head for whatever reason. Yep. I wonder if they, if they, uh, you know, the the colonel and the scientist and whomever else. Yep. I wonder if they experimented on him at all when he was, when he think, was first brought in. Yeah, I think they just want to check on him. Right. right. They check on him. They run some sort of scan and they determine that he has the potential to be one of the yep. like to be a psychic yep. uh, but I don't know I wonder if, if his massive personality shift or what we're meant or what we're led to believe is a massive personality shift I wonder if that came as a result of any meddling in his brain yep uh, I don't know yep we we, we doesn't uh, we haven't talked about K and Ryu yet but uh, yeah I, Ryu I think... has a gun and a mustache Oh, right. Which makes him like a guy from uh, uh, Technolize, right? Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. The guy who go under the world. Right. No, he's... Ryu is not that... Uh, he's not that cool a customer. Right. <laughs> what is that guy's name in Technolize? Is it like Yoshi or something? Yeah, well, I don't remember. But uh, he yeah. also have a gun. He can suit. <laughs> Right, but he's he's always like smiling. He's always in control of the situation. Ryu yep. is not always in control of the situation. He's like, for many 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 pages, yep. uh, he's just like running around the city, trying to avoid, you know, getting shot and trying to help um, Takashi escape. That's right. That's right. And he's, of course, Kaneda and K are also involved in that. They are also being chased by the cops or by the military. Mm-hmm. Um, they all end up in the same place, and then there's that scene where. 
there's kind of a big showdown. Like the colonel is there. Yep. Masaru, the who's number twenty seven, he's another one of the psychic children. Is he's mm-hmm. also there. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of military guys. Yep. And then we get that scene where uh it, it everything starts to become very hectic. Like it's difficult to track where characters are in relation to one another. Yep. Because the concrete bed of the river, uh, like Takashi manipulates it so that it rises up. And yep. the way that everything is illustrated, it's all like dark as though it's covered in some sort of black goo. Hmm. But I think that's just meant to be water. Oh, in um in my version, it's actually red. So it's red? What's what's red? The colors. The 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 the, the thing you said is is water. It actually like a um it it's like cover in um in uh, but that's the fire. It's on fire. Yeah, that's that's what I remember uh, reading from, from from my version. I will. I will the color ruins it. everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not just like it's not red because of whatever light is being like it's a stylistic choice or there's red light in the area? Uh, um, uh, is it is it uh like like the Takashi taking effect, right? All right, I show you this. You're gonna show me something. How are you gonna show me? Uh, through uh, to Skype. Well, uh, I mean, images take one million years to travel through Skype. Oh wait, yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about. No, I don't. Is that yeah? Is, is that the, that's what uh, I'm talking about? That scene yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, but there, there's water there. Red water. I uh, I don't know, man. Yep. In yep. any case, I, I found those panels a little bit difficult to parse. Yep. yep. Um, yep. And especially the way that Kaneda gets the pill is, like, so convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, true. if Masaru and Takashi have psychic powers, why does Masaru have to, like, get up close to him in his little hovering pod and, like, try to hand it to him physically? Why doesn't he just float it over there with his brain? Good. Why doesn't Takashi take it with his brain? <laughs> And, like, bring it close to himself. Yeah, well... Why doesn't he just open his mouth and, like, zoom the pill down his throat with psychically? Well, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, like, the first chapters, and um, I, I don't think the rule has been established yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, but, I mean, a... it, it's, Tak- it's Takashi who's manipulating all this, yep. these... It's a bit too convenient I, for Takashi I, to, to... I'm pretty sure there it's, like, concrete underneath... Uh, the riverbed where where they're all yeah. at, uh-huh. uh, or wherever they are, who knows? I mean, based on what color it is, they could be in any location at all. Yeah, I don't even know what's happening at this point. Now that this new variable has been introduced, but if he's able to do that, if he's able to like put on some tremendous show of like ability and force like that, then I don't get how a pill can just slip through his fingers. Yep, but it um, did. But Kaneda has to end up with it so that he can give it to the nurse and get it analyzed. And we find out that, like, even one of the little tiny granules inside is more potent than yep. um, any of the drugs that any of these, like, low level street dealers are, but, uh, are uh, selling. Yeah, that's right. And uh, they have, like, some, uh, uh, some government regulated substance as well, which, which means illegal stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah, I can explain uh, that uh, maybe Takashi was really weak at, at, at the time. You know, like he he uh, he need he need a pill. He uh, he like been really assaulted so that he can you cannot use the psychic psychic power anymore. But he did use it to make all those big yeah yeah blocks so raise up. I mean, I mean after that after that he has like no more power to you know like to even you know catch the uh, the pill with his might okay so then why doesn't masaru immediately <laughs> but, recall it after he sees that it slips through takashi's fingers yeah well but but yeah but the thing is you know like uh that scene established that you know like takashi uh in in grew you know like urgent need of of a pill and then mm-hmm. late, later on um he didn't take the pill but uh so it's and then later on we see that he he was he, he's still safe and and fine you know like there's no real urgency to that well 
You mean you're talking about later when they're in the nursery? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, at that point, he's probably taken his medicine. I I, I mean, like, if if it it that was when you know, like, he really needed the most, and he doesn't take it, it it must have been you know, like, more of a uh, of a dire con- consequences than this. It just, I, guess. I I mean, it's just like a, a a plot device for for our main character to grab that uh the pills. Right, yeah, because that's his key to getting involved in the larger plot again. Yep, 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 yep. So, yep. Uh, really in- interesting concept. I I really wanted to see more. I'm 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 down to read more of this. Uh, a bit a bit shaky on 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 these um, on on the plot development, but you know, like I'm I'm willing to take it to take that aside. Well, it it feels like we're just getting started. You know, we've we've just learned that there is some sort of presence or entity or whatever named Akira, whose awakening will like threaten the whole. Well, will certainly threaten the Colonel at any rate. Yep. Uh, oh. We we know that there's a big you know showdown between the military and this uh, you know like this rogue organization that's trying to stop them from keeping these children in captivity. There's eventually that conflict will come to a head but the kid the, our main characters are just starting to get involved in all that so there's probably going to be a lot more uh, uh conflict a lot more shootouts a lot more psychic showdowns and uh what have you in the future there's one more thing that i want to add uh is i uh there's one point that canada and uh and k see the uh, psychic version of canada oh yeah yeah appear and disappear and he says something about Akira. Yeah, that's very interesting because I, I, I. Uh, my theory is that uh. Maybe they time travel. Not sure. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think it's maybe. I mean, I would just hazard a guess that Akira is probably so powerful that, he's like he maybe he doesn't have a physical form. Um, and so he can appear anywhere to anyone in any shape, right. and that's how he, that's how he uh, appears to Kaneda. He's trying to communicate. Yep. Uh, and he just takes on Kaneda's form. I don't know for whatever reason, just uh, psychic stuff that I don't understand. <laughs> is he is he too raw? Yeah, I guess. I mean, if you've already got a character occupying a particular scene or panel, just draw it again. Yeah. <laughs> but with flames all over it. So yep. not that easy. <laughs> yep. And there, that that scene is actually interesting to me because of of like a specific little symbol that was uh, drawn as this um, fiery Akira, um, you know, figure disappears. There's a little flash um, that kind of looks like something that would like if a character snapped their fingers and you wanted to do the an effect indicating that they had snapped. Um, like kind of a little spiky halo looking thing, mm-hmm. um, kind of like a like a like a flash, like a little ring emitting light in a bunch of different jagged directions. Um, that symbol appears when the fiery uh, Kaneda disappears, and I noticed I, it stood out to me in that moment. And then I I thought about it, and I noticed that I had seen it in other. Um, contexts in these first 164 pages even when a character who doesn't have psychic powers like realized that there was an enemy nearby or something it would be that same exact little little ring Hmm. Um, and so I'm wondering what the reason for that is like it's it's not unique so it's possible that it's just something that Otomo likes to draw as a way of like I don't know like a like kind of an exclamation mark yeah. almost like visually just kind of putting a snap yep. um in a particular scene or maybe the idea is that all humans have like the potential to awaken their psychic powers and when you get mm-hmm. that sixth sense uh that there's yep. like somebody nearby and you're in danger that's what that is and that's why he would use it like for example when Ryu um sensed that there was an enemy nearby when he was being chased through the city with Takashi, mm-hmm. 
um, that same symbol appeared. Maybe the implication is that he's got dormant psychic powers. Maybe everybody does. Yep. And the, the whatever this military organization is, they're just bringing it out of people. What already exists in them, and like feeding them, like pumping them with drugs, and putting them through like inhuman tests and stuff to bring it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Or it could just be a little thing he likes to draw. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We will see. We will see. Yeah. At, I mean, it's at any rate, it's something that I'm going to be keeping an eye out for yep. going forward, seeing when that little symbol shows up and why, and yep. if it's meant to mean anything more than than it than it does. All right. Yep. Do you have any other notes on, um, on Akira? I mean, I have my whole notepad file here in front of me. Wow. Right. Um, but it's hard to sort through everything that I wrote hmm. at a glance. So... I think we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. So the next one, we co- we only cover like a uh, chapter three, right? Just one chapter. Yeah, but it's chapter three on like a specific hosting site. So it's right, going right, to be yeah, roughly, yeah. 80, roughly 80 more pages. It'll cool. take us to the halfway point of volume one, I think. Something mm. like that. Okay. All right. That's so And that'll good. be going up next week. Yep, that's right. Yep. Okay. So we'll see you then. Yep. So see you soon on, on next week for more Akira. All right. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. And this is the Akira Postcard. We continue to do um, for chapter three and four of Akira's. Half of chapter three, to be more specific. Um, yes, and it's, it's more or less a continuation of... Um, of the uh, first two chapter that we uh, that we read uh, last week, yeah, we're going to the end of uh, you know because there's the multiple editions. It's kind of a, a laborious process to explain exactly what material we'll be covering. But if you want to just click over to akiramanga.com, we're going to the end of chapter four on that site. Right. Uh, it's also page two forty three if you're reading the Dark Horse version. Yeah. But. Hopefully you've just already read the Akira manga like 10 times. You have it all memorized and so you don't need to do any of that. Yep. And we'll just talk about our experience uh, reading that far. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm just a, um, a novice who um, want to read manga in color. So that's why I prefer this season. Uh, sorry, <laughs> this version of um, Akira rather right. than the Dark Horse. I mean, color is appealing. And plus, it can help clarify what the hell is going on, um, yep, yep. because there are some moments in Akira, which is like as a as a manga, as a work of art, it's so detailed yep. that sometimes the detail piles up on top of itself, and you're wondering what it, what precisely is happening, yep. like, like what the character's location is, because the location is obscured by water or fire or smoke or debris. Yep, like like the water uh, wave that uh, what we see last. Uh, last week it's right in, it's, i was it's i was right. asking like <laughs> right i was asking like tons of questions Wait, where are they what 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 body water is this where exactly are they in the city is yep. that place the same as the one from before or is that the one after yep this one i mean we're not covering as much material here it's just um starting with where are we starting yep um i i, I tell you the two uh the two timeline that we have up for for the for this batch First is Tetsuo. We see uh, Tetsuo uh, chill break. Right, because he was suffering. Uh, he, he headache. Was, yeah, he had a massive headache, and we see him use his psychic powers yep. in bed on that potted plant. That was like the last panel of um, the, the part that we read yep. previously. So yeah, that's that's right. On his end, it's the jailbreak and what he does afterwards. Yep. Uh, the thing is, he he's not to become too powerful, and um, there's there is now that he can control his new new power, but um, yeah, the thing is he he kill other people a bit too easily. Yeah, and gruesome as well. Yeah, a bit too easily is right. He doesn't even need to touch them. Yeah, um, he just thinks about it, and they they're, I don't know what how exactly they die. They um, I think if they're they melt it. You think he. The, well, I don't know. I think it's more like he creates some sort of explosion, like their yeah. their organs or their brains. He kind of 
inflates them. Yeah, because uh, or something. He, I, I think he killed two people in this, uh, in in, in this uh chapter. One of them yeah. is the uh, uh, the the guy from the uh, the, um, the opposition gang, and uh, his his head explode. The I other... forget the name of that gang, but they have like uh, a mouth with a hand covering it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, or a ghost or something, some kind of logo on all their helmets and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, he makes he causes his head to explode. So the other, uh, I... the other motorcyclists yeah i don't know what to call them clone. i don't want to call them gang members i, I think it's like the clone gang or something Cl- clown yes clown, clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know why i thought ghost but they take him back to their hideout and give him a bunch of drugs because yeah. i don't know because he's had i mean i'm not sure why they do it exactly there's even a little conversation between two of the members yeah. uh, of the clown gang I'd... who were like why are you inviting him back to our hideout you idiot <laughs> Yeah, I I think it's like uh the pain killer that uh you know like make him less pain of his head, but uh, yeah I I I just think that guy idea is just uh you know like to uh to advance the story to tame to tame the beast and then you know like follow uh fo- uh follow the guys lead because I think he become a new the new leader of the gang. Well, yeah, he. I think there is a, an implication that he will be because Joker is the current leader, and we meet him when we go back to the bowling alley, and Tetsuo's making bowling balls fly all around. Yep. And he freaks Joker out, and then during the scene where he's taking all the taking all the drugs enough for five people or ten people, whatever the number is, um, there's some sort of dialogue between members of the clown gang who are like, "Yeah, he's he's going to be our new leader." I don't want him to be our new leader. He's crazy. Um, I don't understand why any of this is happening. As soon as the as soon as the the guys on the bikes see their buddy get his head exploded, yep. wouldn't they just get on their bike and drive away? Yeah. Well, one of them uh, <laughs> was about to do that, but the other guy he just adds acid. Why? Uh, uh, plot. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was thinking as well. Yeah, well, and uh, the the second, the rather, uh, it's rather the first. The first person that he killed is one of the uh, body, uh, sorry, the guard. And, yeah, uh, the security guard out in the hallway. Yeah, and uh, we see him like his body was like you know like melted. So I would say that uh, like all of his organ was you know like exploded as, as well. Yeah, something like that. So gruesome. He just kills him real fast. Yeah, and uh, I remember like at one point he said like after he taken a rock, he said like the only reason that you guys still here is because I, 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 I don't want I don't want to kill you yet. Yeah, but in response to that, I would say Tetsuo, the only reason that you're here is because the author of the manga decided <laughs> that these guys were going to give you a ride back to their secret hideout. Yep. Yep. Hello. In fact, there's multiple jokes along those same lines in this like little tiny slice of the manga. Yep. Um, because the the colonel who heads up this secret organization who's experimenting on children and giving them psychic powers and stuff, at one point he tells one of his goons, you know, turn those lights off. Do you want everyone to know where our secret base is? Yep, 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 yep. Um, so I don't know if that's just a, like an in joke from Otomo. <laughs> and maybe a way of like winking at the audience and acknowledging that everyone's secret bases are just way too easily accessed yep. in his work. Yep. Um, yeah, maybe, that's what I choose to believe. <laughs> maybe because uh, Canada, uh, he get into that secret base and uh, he managed to escape out of it. Uh, right. Along with K. Yeah. What's the name of that? The like the resistance group. I can't remember. What's do uh, they have a particular name? Hold on. Hold on. I. T- I see if I if I remember, I because I'm looking at my notes here from our our previous talk on the first couple chapters, and I just keep writing reuse organization. All right, let's just <laughs> let's just use that for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if they have a name, but yeah, so Canada in kind of invades their secret base. I I don't know if you can really call it an invasion when he's just invited in, because yep. he's like a thorn in their side, and he's always showing up where they are. Um, 
So he's invaded their secret base, and the colonel needs the lights to be turned out so no one finds the military secret base. And Tetsuo has invaded the clown gang's secret base, which is just a bowling alley. Uh-huh. And, uh, I mean, I'm just wondering how many other bases we'll get to see. Because this is, we're not even, like, 10% of the way through the manga. Yep. Um, there's already three bases. Yeah, well. Are we going to get a home run? Maybe. <laughs> um, why, why can they not have to uh, lock, lock K off to retrieve his uh, motorcycle? Why? I don't know. I mean, that kind of made sense to me. Because... Yeah. He left his motorcycle behind in order to go with them. And I was like, what? Isn't your whole identity based on the fact that you're a leader of a motorcycle gang? And isn't it also your mode of transportation without which you're going to be a kind nobody? of like, uh, yeah, a, no- a nobody a and also unable to go anywhere and kind of like socially paralyzed. Yep. Um, so him going back for his motorcycle just makes perfect sense. Right. And I guess she would try to stop him right? because he might give away their position or something. All right. So he locks her up, which I think makes sense. But what doesn't make sense, at least not to me, is what happens immediately before that, when he's like making a move on her. Yeah, and, well, well uh, he... turns out it was just a prank, bro. I was just trying to get your gun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was about to say that. Um, I think he 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 kind of half half. He kind of tried to make the move on Kay, and when that didn't happen, he happened to you know like steal steal the gun from Kay, and you know. Let right. let to get the uh, the motorcycle. Yeah, we already know that he doesn't have a lot of respect for people in general or girls. Yep, yep. Um, yep. So might as well keep it consistent. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess. Yep. So uh, he nearly got coughed by um, uh, the the colonels and uh, yeah, and the people there, but. I, I think the people there is like the uh, the whole bunch of a uh, of a licorice uh, uh, record agents. agents yeah who right. I they just can't hit anything with a gun that's right that that's one thing that I um, that I forgot to mention in the licorice uh, records that uh, the um, <coughs> they're also the uh, a gang of boys lily bells I, I I don't like that at all you know like why do they have like a bunch of boys and good as well. I oh, why don't they have a bunch of smelly men? I just want to watch cute girls shooting guns. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. the better question: Why was it like? Why were they written into the story at all? Yeah, they did absolutely nothing. They were called in to assassinate Chisato, and then they just didn't do that. It's it's not only Chisato though. I think they uh they were supposed oh, yeah. to gonna... to. To annihilate the uh, the the whole the whole licorice um, yeah team members to get rid of the evidence yep because there was going to be a scandal Jesus sorry for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about <laughs> licorice recoil which is a recent TV anime that uh, aired between June and September yep That's... and we just got finished talking about it on our I guess on this podcast too huh yeah uh show that we're I we're still on double cross anime <laughs> a show that I like I I, I enjoy it Booper didn't. Yeah, I, I'm starting to feel a little bad about that, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I've been watching anime for so long that I'm past the point of like pretending that yep. I care about a popular show. Right. I mean, I there there are plenty of popular shows that I do like. Yeah. But just because a show is well received in general, I I mean, I'd, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't, and if I don't, I'm not going to pretend that I do. Yep. 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 All right. So back to K in Canada. So yeah, the whole the, the whole book of uh of the chapter we see so far is uh their attempt to, you know, like go through the tendos and uh escape from the ga- uh from the from the gas, taking the uh, motorcycle and you know like yeah, run out run out of the uh, secret place. Which is Yeah, so they they escape and I mean that's all Canada's design. K doesn't want to be doing that. Yep. Although their their secret hideout does get infiltrated, so they do have to go on the run. Yep, yep. Um, so I guess Canada had the right idea by accident, but now they're yeah now they're on the run somewhere. I don't know where they're going exactly. I have no idea. Either. I... But he smells bad. Yep. That's the last panel. <laughs> that we that's the that was our stopping point. Yeah, that's what you get when you go through all the tendons with you know like smelly. Uh... 
He was down in the sewers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that here's a question. Since you're reading the epic version, which is in color, was all the water brown? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's nasty. Um, yeah, mine was black because I'm reading <laughs> black and white, and I feel very vindicated in that choice right now. <laughs> Don't have to look at poop water. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It's, oh, one it's, one question it, I did want to ask you, since you're reading the color version, has yep. to do specifically with it's one Nakura of the things goes. we haven't talked about yet, which is Akira's chamber. Chamber, right? Yeah. Do you remember when the colonel goes uh, down into the, you know, his yep. secret base, yep. which he doesn't want anyone to find out about, so we got to turn off the lights. Yep. And there's a bunch of science scientists talking like techno babble about how many degrees Kelvin it is. Yep. Uh-huh. And how it's getting like really close to absolute zero, like totally freezing. Yep. Um, and then he goes up to Akira's chamber, like that big dome looking thing with all the massive pipes coming out of it and yep. the, the door and the nameplate right above the door that says Akira. I wanted to ask you, is it like, is it kind of white with a blue tint to indicate like that it's frozen and kind of crystallized? All in right. The color version? Um, I'm switching it to in and out. To see if, because I, all right, this is. I mean, do you remember what color the dome was? The blue. It's it is in blue. It's like um, uh, blue white. So it's 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 like a a a a, a, a snow a, a okay. ice ice uh, colors. Okay. I guess in that. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I was assuming because there was so much talk about. It being so close to absolute zero. Yep. 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 Um, and I guess the reason it's so cold is because they keep it that way so that Akira can't like move. Wake up. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's yeah. I guess he's, I if he's it. if he's actually if he's actually asleep. Yep. That's true. Because it's I mean if they're keeping it so cold in there, it's possible that they're like forcibly imprisoning yep. him by using that low temperature. Yep. Um, and when the girl. I can't remember the girl's name. If I look up, I'll probably let me see. Kyoko. Yeah, Kyoko, the the girl who has the dream about Akira awakening. Mm. I mean, rather than a literal awakening, that could mean that somehow he's going to get his power back uh and be able to bust out of that chamber despite the like how how freezing cold it is. Yep. Or- I mean, in in either case, it's looking like if her if her prediction is accurate, um that Akira is going to you can see how desperate they are to keep him locked up just from the visual of of that chamber yeah. and the dialogue about the freezing temperatures um so it must be a pretty big deal i see the thing that you yeah. sent me here yeah that's in particular that's what i was curious about like the area right in front of the door it it did kind of look to me in the black and white version like there was snow there um it, it, as though that was like the result <coughs> of opening the door and and ice and snow like blowing out right um yeah okay cool cool yeah so akira giving given this um double page introduction basically mm. we don't see him but we see his chamber very uh it makes it clear right away especially the size of the thing because you can see the colonel in the bottom yeah. left hand corner of that double panel <coughs> and he's just a tiny little man compared to that massive structure yeah so that's a you know a foreshadowing of what Akira is capable of. Mm-hmm. Cool. I I don't think uh, I I don't have any other notes on this chapter in particular. Do you have any others? Right? Yeah. No, I don't. I mean, we hardly read anything. We just got caught up a little bit with. Yep. Um. You know, we we read a lot more. Um. Last week. <coughs> That's right. We had a lot of anime to talk about this week, uh, so we just took it easy on Akira. But we'll, we will be back in two weeks, I guess, yep. with more. Mm-hmm. Um, chapters five and six, I think. Okay. Maybe five and seven. Whatever takes us to the end of the first volume. I have it mapped out somewhere on a Google Doc, but yep. I um, don't feel like clicking over to it now. That's all right. And um, normally, I think uh, when we do the tensor, we don't do the uh, uh, the, the chapters. Oh. You're right. So it's probably going to be a month from now, huh? Yep. Yep. It's according to uh to the uh, to the schedule as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll be back eventually. And I mean everybody who's listening to this is just hearing it as one continuous video file anyway. So 
Yep. You'll never even know we were gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So see you, Dan. Yep. More Acura to come. Bye. Hi, everyone. And we get to the Acura podcast. This time we cover the uh, chapter 5 and 6 of Acura. And I must say, I think uh, me and Wooper had this conversation before the first cap, but uh, uh, the way Akira go is it go through one main storyline throughout, you know, like throughout the entire uh, stories. So uh, basically, it, this is just like an extension of what we seen before in um, uh, in the previous chapters. There are some, some um, there are some many events happening now. So, so, so we get into that, Booper? Sure. I mean, I would expect it to be a continuation, right? Because it comes after, um, you know, they're in the next chapters, so they would probably continue what's what's come yeah. before. But they they are distinct from a work from somebody like uh, Naoki Urasawa, who develops a whole bunch of different plots with different subcasts of characters. This yep, is yep, yep. this is just following Kaneda and Tetsuo. Um, you know, and other characters pop in and out of the story, but they're always, you know, related to the two of them. One of the one of the two of them, at least in some fashion. Yep. Um, the the thing that it, it's mostly the fact that uh, this is all action. You know, that's mm -hmm. what is getting kind of eating at me as uh, as I'm continuing to read because chapters five and six, like on AkiraManga.com. They take you up yep. to the end of the first volume. So it's volume one that we're finishing here. Yep. And it's just it's just action. You know, the the biker gangs are having their, their turf wars back on. Um and and Kanada's gang specifically is targeting Tetsuo, who's now the leader of the, the clown gang. Mm -hmm. And it's just him using psychic powers to like destroy this warehouse and throw a whole bunch of crates at them and even throw a big piece of like construction equipment like machinery uh, at Canada and Kay at one point as they're fleeing on his motorcycle. And I'm just not sure like obviously there's the whole plot about psychic children and everything and, and the colonel who's who wants to get the pill back. And yeah. I'm just not sure what is beneath all of this. And I'm not talking about like a bigger overarching plot or mystery or anything like that. I'm talking about what's beneath it in terms of the reason for its authorship. What am I supposed to get out of this? I just don't know. Right. Well, I think we're still waiting for the big thing to happen, which is like the report of Akira. I think uh, the plot has been hitting this for a while and it's, it's gonna explode sometime soon. Uh, the second, the second uh, plot line is about Tetsuo and Canada, and um, yeah. So we, uh, like you said, we have like the uh, uh, the biker gangs war that that is happening now. But like all these, uh, all the other vice gang against uh, the clone gang uh, led by Tetsuo. And uh, Tetsuo is slowly, you know, like losing his mind. So we have like the first uh, uh, face off between Canada and Tetsuo when Tetsuo, you know, like having this new power, and uh, he he been abusing that as well. So he been, you know, like killing people endlessly, endlessly, senselessly. Oh man, I love to use that word now after, he <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the the whole map plot actually is about you know like uh for Tetsuo to uh, uh to contain that uh the pills and he swallowed that and he you know like having more power now. Right, the pill helps fight off his side effects, yeah. and perhaps it also amplifies his his psychic abilities. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's great for him. <laughs> Yeah. And he can get more potentially if he allies himself with the colonel and goes along with whatever the military's plans are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all, all the, I mean, it, it's just it kind of feels like the presentation of the story is just so matter of fact. Like the the art is yeah, very detailed. Right. You know, there's all the panels of the the bikers like fighting with one another and uh, jumping from 
like off of their bike and onto the like the face of one of the the clown guys and then they then there's a crash and yep it's it you know the the explosions the the speed at which the bikes are traveling um the the vehicles themselves there's just there's a lot of detail to it but i man i don't i'm feeling i'm feeling like the story's a little empty honestly oh, well. Yep. I don't know how much I'm looking forward to reading five more volumes of this. I I mean, I from my feeling, I think it will get better. Now that you know, like it it if Tetsu are gonna join the colonels and uh, he he be in the test uh, subject, there's gonna be more plot involved in that, and uh, it it will be less of like just the uh, just a straightforward showdown between Tetsu and Canada. It will be more about you know these things plus you know like the awakening of Akira so I I still think that there's still more to come there's definitely more to come there's five volumes to come yeah <laughs> just don't know how entertaining they're going to be or how uh interesting or meaningful or I... substantive or anything like that yeah um I think one thing up uh it's good to have is that instead of that just two chapter we can we can uh read more so they have like more events to come, but it's, it's well. I think energy. I think I have um, you know, us alternating between two and three chapters every other week, like in terms of what we're what we've got coming up. But yeah, yeah. I have thought about the fact that we're you know, there are thirty eight. Is it thirty six or thirty? I think it's thirty eight chapters. Um, you know, if you're using the the epic comics numbering system as opposed to mm -hmm. dark horse yep. so there are 38 chapters and we're only through six of them so that means what 32 left to go mm -hmm. and if you you know average three four. and two that's 2.5 and 2.5 goes into 32 i don't know how many yep. times is that that's five into 64 which means almost 15 times and if we do it every <laughs> other week that would be 30 weeks which is more than half a year yeah so i've been thinking about all that as you can tell <laughs> Yeah. And yep. yeah, I mean, I have no doubt that the story will open up um, because it gets into the whole psychic powers, like their their origin and how exactly the government hopes to use people who have those abilities. And I know the story is going to go in more than just one direction, but yep. right now I'm not really I, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, I, I, I can see why, because I don't feel that uh, I don't feel that the characters here is, is that good to begin with. Like I feel that ca uh Canada and K relationship, for example, I just you know like stalling in the moment. Um, I don't even know what relationship you would say that they have. I mean, she's like his babysitter, right? She needs to keep an eye yeah. on him for Ryu, and for the yeah. whatever plan their organization has. Yeah, and Canada is just kind of you know like the person who who go with the wind, so. You know, like the moment that he he hear that um, <coughs> uh, the uh, biker gang needs him, he's you know like, yeah, let's let's do the meeting. Let's you know like try out uh, Tetsuo. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little confused actually as to why Ryu's organization is giving him so much autonomy. Like, he says to K, "Oh, just keep an eye on him. Don't let him out of your sight." Yeah. yeah. Why don't you just? capture him again Lock him and, up. you know because originally he was in uh he was in some sort of holding cell and k was in there with him and he escaped but why yeah, not but... just grab him again like he's just a yeah. kid you know yeah but the thing is now um they want to keep an eye for him because of the pill and now the pill is gone he might not you know like not get used anymore but yeah he, but before he... that yeah, but he's the one who always like sticking his nose to you know like, where, where where things happening. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I really don't know what to say, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's just not a lot going on. In... No, no, there, that's not it at all. There's plenty well, happening. Yeah, there's nothing substantial to say about. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. Life. I mean. It's just like an, an adventure series where Canada just ends up in, you know, in danger. He, yeah. You got to move him from one dangerous situation to the next where he's like, you know, dodging, 
dodging stuff, running, biking to different places, running around, you know, making trouble, trying to survive. Yeah. And honestly, I can see way more of that coming down the pipeline. Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's not yep. as though the show is just going to get rid of Canada while it explains what the hell's going on underground with all these, with Akira and all these psychic children and whatever the government is. Yeah, is planning on doing. It's not as though Canada is just going to be like, I think I'll just uh, sit this volume out. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no way. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you one cool thing about these these couple of chapters are the image of Tetsuo riding his bike with his arms crossed. Right, right. Implying that he, like, controls the steering column psychically. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's not the answer. That also the answer that I really like as well. It, it say a lot about his characters, right? Like he's going to use his powers to the to the fullest in every situation that he can, because it's him, yeah. you know, taking uh, taking things into his own hands. Like he finally has some bit of authority, which he didn't have when he was underneath uh, Kaneda's thumb as part of their their gang. Yeah. Now he's just going to use every single tool at his disposal, yeah, and give himself thing- major headaches in the process. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, for now, his aim is just to, you know, like, kill everyone off. he been abusing the power, and it gets tiresome also as well. Yeah, he threatens to kill the colonel too, doesn't he? Yeah, just, like, just because... Just he, because he tells like, him, you're next, or something like that. Yeah, he he tell him something that, you know, like, why should I listen to you when I, when, when I can kill you? Yeah. So, you know, like, his tendency is just like, you know, like, if if if, if everyone get into his way, he just kill them. Because <laughs> it's easy to do so. And Yeah, it's like uh, Naruto, if instead of Sasuke betraying the Leaf Village, like, 80 episodes in, he did it yep. five episodes in, and was twice as much of a dick about it. And it was just uh, that's like right. fight scene after fight scene. Yep, that's right. So yep, I agree that um, Akira and Manga need to do it better to hook us. But um, I I think this is uh, um, this is not the benefit of this is a disadvantage of you know like watching this uh uh you know like in in small doses because I think Akira should be enjoying you know like in a bigger dose. I guess. I mean, it is the sort of story that just every single um, you know new chapter picks on picks up where the other one left off. Yep. But uh, I don't know. For me, that creates like fatigue. Yeah. I need yep. some variety, or else uh, I'll just decide to read or watch or do something else. Yeah. So. But who knows? We're now we're shifting not just from chapter to chapter, but we're we're starting an entirely new volume. Yep. I don't know yeah, if true. that um, if you know that demarcation was made after the fact. Yeah. Um, you know that might not have anything to do with the way that it was originally published. Yeah, but and, um, they probably chose to cut it off here for it. You know, there had to have been a reason at the very least. Yeah, well, uh, he gonna try the uh, uh, the colonos and yeah, and I, I I would say that we might get. To see more more of the psychics, uh, uh, kids, and right. I'm I'm only to that because they they for now the more interesting characters out of the whole cast. All right. Well, we'll have to see um, what direction the story heads in next time. Yeah, yeah. Which yep. will be in a couple of weeks, but yep. you may not it, see a new episode of this series for a couple months or a month. It'll right. I'll get it up whenever I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, man. <laughs> I, I leave it all to you. Yeah. <laughs> I got this. Right. So, yep, we will talk right back after two weeks. Yep. For more of Akira's. <laughs>